Apollo himself had ne'er crafted such a beautiful adagio, and with that encouragement, Lord Raven brought his sensual, masculine lips to Beatrice's... Oh, um, I don't read this low art form that is the romance novel. Never. I was just enjoying my well-worn copy of Jonathan Franzen's Freedom. Yeah, that that's it. The romance novel has been the subject of intrigue, derision, and shame in literary discourse long before the modern genre as we know it today even existed. Romance novels tend to be relegated to your Aunt Muriel's bathroom, thrift store book sections, and that one aisle in Barnes & Noble that you pretend to walk through because you got lost looking for cookbooks. But it deserves a closer look than that. It is, after all, the highest grossing of all literary genres, outselling its next nearest competitor twice over. So what actually makes a romance novel different from any other novel that has a love story, other than, you know, brooding highlanders and billowing shirts? Here are a few defining qualities. Number one, there must be a happily ever after. Without that, it's not a romance novel. It might be a love story, but it's not a romance novel. Number two, an emphasis on the relationship between the heroine and her hero. So-called women's lit differs from the romance novel in that while it might lean heavily on romance, it's usually more focused on the character's personal journey. Think Bridget Jones's diary. Number three, the actual, you know, romance part. Mm -hmm. So where did the modern romance novel come from? Well, we've had hard eyes for love stories for millennia, but let's look at a few authors whose influence on the genre is the most profound. Jane Austen and the Bronte sisters. Well, Charlotte and Emily, anyway. And Bronte didn't have time for that. Though the genre did not yet exist, Jane Austen was basically writing beat for beat what we see in most modern romance stories, i.e. light-hearted love stories wrapped in witty social commentary. And then there were Charlotte and Emily Bronte, whose stories featured moody heroines dissatisfied and or bored with the role society has handed down to them, colliding with their equally moody and misunderstood heroes, with a lot of ruin and angst along the way. So what is different in the modern genre as we know it? Well, the biggie is you're allowed to write about sex now. Okay, so that is a broad oversimplification, but in the past 200 years of world history, the roles in romantic lives of women have changed drastically. With the sexual revolution came an interest in narratives where women are active agents in their own romantic and sexual lives. By and large, romance remains the only genre that centers women, in that it is by, for, and about them, and focuses on parody with a partner. This comes with a variety of tropes catering to what you, the reader, want. One trope is the beta hero. Oh, yeah. He's soft, he's sweet, he is a cinnamon roll turned into a man. Here's a genuinely good man who is willingly fighting to be worthy of the heroine. He is less common and popular a trope than the alpha hero. These are your Mr. Darcy's, your Mr. Rochester's, your Christian Grey's. Impenetrable, brooding, cold at first, usually to cover up for his tragic past. And were it not for the heroine, he would always be a curmudgeonly jerk. The alpha hero ties in with the bodice ripper trope. The bodice ripper is a historical fiction subgenre that usually involves some kind of forced seduction in the romancing of the heroine. She knows it's wrong, but it feels so right. Which is a lot to unpack. Why is this still so popular? Well, it might be because there's a still pervasive attitude that women aren't really allowed to want no. sex, and therefore narratives of forced seduction make wanting sex socially acceptable. So the bodice ripper allows the reader to have her cake and eat it too. But this also ties in with feminist discussions on the topic. Are romances merely tawdry and patriarchal, or can they be consensual and sex positive? More so, why can't they be fabulous? Queer romance has existed as long as the genre has, although like most LGBTQ art, it didn't get much attention or exposure until recently. In 1952, The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith was revolutionary in that it was the first lesbian romance with a happy ending. In that nobody died and no one went back to her man. Considering that this was published in an age where you could get arrested for having your name on a queer magazine subscription list, that it was published at all makes it a milestone. So while queer romance is not new, that it's picking up steam is. The same holds true for paranormal romance. Not new, but boy did it explode in the early 2000s. Which meant vampires, a bad boy classic. And a boom in YA paranormal romance that wasn't just for young adults. Which leads us to Fifty Shades of Grey, which is an outlier and perhaps should not be counted. Is it romance? Is it erotica? Is it fan fiction? None of the above? There is disagreement, but it does speak to a desire and led to a boom in the popularity of spanky billionaire oh, erotica. Baby. It's not for me, but I, I get it. So for a genre that is seemingly so throwaway, romance has been, like science fiction, a roadmap of how we see certain ethical and personal issues over time. It is a genre that has been almost entirely driven by women, and no longer just cis straight white women. 
There is a common tendency in fiction to see women fail or be punished for being in control of themselves and their narratives, especially when it comes to their romantic and sexual lives. And nothing sticks it to your enemy more than you living out your happiness. So here's to you, the romance novel. Special thanks also to romance author Sarah McLean for providing her expertise in this episode. Her newest book, Wicked and the Wallflower, is available now. The Great American Read is a new series on PBS about why we love to read, leading up to a nationwide vote on America's favorite novel. Who decides America's favorite novel, you ask? Well, that would be you. So head to pbs.org slash greatamericanread to vote on your favorite book. Check the link in the description for more details. <laughs>